This is an interview I did recently with Colleen Byram for her Facebook group, Evidential Mediumship Development Forum. In this interview, I talk about how to develop mediumship and the development journey itself. I hope it is helpful for all those developing mediumship, and I do hope you enjoy it. Hi, everybody. I'm Colleen Byram. I'm the admin on Evidential Mediumship Development Forum, and I'm here today with our good friend, Martin Twycross. Martin is an AFC, that's Arthur Findlay College, approved tutor. He is an outstanding teacher of mediumship. I know many of you have seen me recommend his work here on these pages. And without further ado, let me say hi, Martin. Hi there, Colleen. Lovely to be with you again. Thank you so much. It's really good to have you here. I always enjoy our talks. You know, I thought, it, yeah, I thought it might be interesting today to start with, can you tell us how you developed your mediumship? Sure, yeah, I can talk about that, no problem at all. Um, I, I'll try and talk about it in the big picture rather than specifics, just so that uh, I, I, won't, I won't bore people with the details of which church I went to or where and when. But basically, I guess basically I followed a tried and tested path within the UK uh, churches. And with that, we, we normally start in the UK with sending people along to what we call awareness circles. And awareness circles is a very gentle circle whereby you get to explore uh, your psychic and mediumistic development. It's the, the prime focus is primarily uh, psychic because to do this work, we have to develop our psychic senses. We have to unfold our psychic abilities because all mediumship ultimately, ultimately fundamentally works through the psychic. So uh, with myself, I went to my local spiritualist church. I used to attend two uh, awareness circles per month uh, at, the, at the church. And after a little while, you get invited sometimes into what we call the closed circle or a developing circle, which is invite only, where those who are showing uh, promise get invited into the next level of development with a teacher in the church. And at this point, I was also going to a, a lot of courses, a lot of uh, day courses or weekend courses. And I also started going to the Arthur Finley College as well as a student. The next step as well was what we call open platform, which is where developing mediums get to stand on a platform and work in front of a real live audience and, and do their mediumship. And so that was the next step in the development of doing mediumship. Uh, so I'd say that I was probably doing open platform within a year, which is really quite quick. I, I actually took my first service on platform within 18, just under eight, just over 18 months, which is very, very quick. But that was being invited with another medium to do some of the service with them, which I'm very grateful for the, the teacher who took me out with them. Uh, but I also un understood after a while that this, this, that this concept of developing ourselves and processes like meditation and sitting in the power, which I hadn't really done masses amounts of, within the awareness circles, within the, uh, the developing circle, we do do some degree of meditation, but there's not a strong focus on it. It wasn't until I went to the Arthur Finley College and it was Mavis Patilla who took me to one side. I wasn't even on her course and she took me to one side in the, in the bar and she said, you need to be sitting in the power. And I was, what is sitting in the power? I don't even know what it is. So she explained it to me and at that point I started to incorporate that into the practice as well. But I, I stayed within an awareness circle, which is the, what we call the beginner circle, the baby circle where you work with a lot of psychic exercises, psychometry, ribbon readings, color readings, orographs, uh, card readings, uh, string readings, you name it, all sorts of different ways of working with our psychic awareness. I think I stayed in that for a good four or five years, even though at that point I was a working medium. And some people would say to me, well, that's crazy. Why are you still doing beginner circle when you've got to that point? Because the one thing we have to recognize is that it's the psychic abilities we use in mediumship. And it's vital that we hone those psychic abilities. So what I see quite commonly is people want to do mediumship, but they skip the psychic. Yeah. People, people don't realize the importance of it. Um, mediums like Gordon Higginson, they were trained extensively in psychometry, trained extensively in working with the psychic. Uh, and I know some of the people Gordon taught Rather than, he said they were good at mediumship, the bit he had to take them back to was the psychic because they missed out on their psychic development. So for me, developing on the psychic was vitally important. 
I spent a lot of more time then just doing a lot more. I, I, so even though I was a working medium on platform, I still continued with my develop until development until the point that I got appointed pretty much as an Arthur Finley College tutor in 2013, 14. So even though we're working for 10 years of that as a working medium, I'm still in development, still doing courses, still doing a great deal with people. Because I think it's important that we keep working with our development. Our development never stops. Even now, I recognize my development never stops. Every time I work on platform, every time I do a sitting, every time I teach a class, it's developing me. Yeah. So, so if you like, that's kind of in the UK, we have a, usually we have spiritualist churches nearby and there is a route, if you like, whereby people go through the awareness circles, through to the development or the closed circle, through to open platform, what we call fledglings evenings as well. Uh, fledglings evenings is like the little bird in the nest about to fly. And it's a service generally taken by people who are under training, people who are not yet at the point of working by themselves, but uh, they're at a point whereby they've, they're, they're good enough to be moving in that direction. So they take a part of that service. The service is taken by the training mediums, the fledglings, and that's how it works. And that's kind of a tried and tested approach within the UK. And prior to the internet, I think most mediums in the UK, that was the mechanism through which they worked, supported by workshops locally and supported by courses nationally at places like the Arthur Finley College. And that's different in the UK. We do not have that infrastructure in most of the rest of the world. Yeah, um, I, I get that. There, <laughs> there's a lot of discussion. Well, there's discussion in the UK as well, but certainly there's a lot of discussion in the US about natural mediums versus trained mediums. And is there a difference? <laughs> and da, 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 da. I'm not sure it matters. It's the service that matters. It's the work that matters. Um, but certainly in the US, we don't have the tradition any longer. We did at one time, but it sort of died off of having the spiritualist churches available to offer this to us. That's unfortunate, I think. Um, Absolutely. And it, you know, even within the UK, there's quite a few parts of the UK that are isolated that don't have access neither. So it's, it's a common problem across the whole of um, Europe, America, Canada, Australia. It's, it's, it, there's, it's a common problem everywhere in the world if you're not lucky enough to have a, an excellent church on your doorstep. You know, one of the things I encounter on, on the Evidential Leadership Development Forum and elsewhere is people, uh, some of us are uh, reluctant to become involved with training. And, it's, and there's, a, there's a, a sense that I just know how to do this. And I'm always surprised by that because I just know how to do this too. But I also if I have the opportunity to, would choose to stand on the shoulders of giants to be better at what I am able to do. I, I think that there's always more to learn, particularly from, you know, from people who are so highly trained and so skilled at it. So into this breach now, we can insert uh, Zoom uh, and Zoom-based classes like yours, which I'm such a big fan of. Uh, if, you haven't heard me say it before. Martin has uh, this course in his course in mediumship, which is a series of study programs and videos that are so generously presented. You know, I just have to editorialize for a minute. There are teachers out there who give you little itty bitty bits of information, one little birdie mouthful at a time, just a teeny weeny little bit. And that's fine if you're a little itty bitty bird, but if you're like, you know, a big hungry bird and you want more information, it's frustrating. And Martin puts out a ton of information and you pick up what you can and then maybe go over the materials again to get yet more. He's a very generous teacher. Tell us about the course that you put together. Well, let, let me take a step back for you. So I started teaching myself in 2006 um, in my local church. I'd been working as a medium for about three years at that point. And what I realized was that most of the teaching within the churches and even within many institutions was primarily practice-based. Mm -hmm. And what I found was that at the time as well, I was also training to be a hypnotherapist. So I was also going through a great deal of study to be a hypnotherapist. And I recognized that a lot of the study that I was doing with hypnotherapy, so much of it, the idea applied to mediumship. And what I found was 
a lot of people had no idea the fundamental theory behind mediumship, the basis of mediumship. And I used to go on courses and classes and I, I've got a scientific background. I need the structure. And I would ask why, why? Explain the basis, the foundations to me. And that many teachers couldn't do that. And, you know, local workshops, people just say, just do it. Stop asking questions and just do it. So I, I realized that if I needed it, there was probably a gap for understanding the theory behind mediumship. And I, I launched a class within our local church to teach the theory of mediumship. We called them mediumship theory classes. And at the time, I, I never intended to produce something for the world. All that happened was we had quite a number of people doing them, but some of them couldn't attend certain weeks. So they asked me, would you video them? And then if we missed them, we can watch the video. And that's how the videos began. And so I did video them. And then I realized that actually we've created a set of 12 classes here with a great deal of theory, which are really quite beneficial to people. And it grew. I'm now up to 24 classes on video. And I re-recorded them all again because the original classes were just set up for the people in the room. It, there was a lot of interaction. I would put like, you know, right, you lot are going to tell me everything I'm going to write on the board, which doesn't really lend itself to a, a teaching video. So I redid the videos from the perspective of an audience watching purely the video. So that's where my videos went to the next time round. But certainly the gap I found was a lot of people didn't have theory. Now, for us to send people out into the world to do therapy with people, go and try and do therapy on that person. And everyone has a kind of an idea in their mind what therapy is like a little bit, a bit like counseling, a bit like just listening to them or whatever it is. So we all go and have a try at it. You know, you wouldn't do that. We teach people the theory first. We teach people the foundations. We teach people the ethics. We teach people the responsibilities. We teach people how to do it well. And then we let them do it under close supervision. We watch how they do it. We train them we, and we help them. And the practice builds until we allow them to go out and do it by themselves because we feel they've reached the standard. The same thing applies to mediumship. But a great deal of courses you go on, everyone's just thrown into practice with each other. Everyone's just thrown into practice in front of an audience without that real foundation of training. So for me, a lot of it was providing this, if you like, theoretical foundation. And as I went through my own training, as, as I worked in doing these theory classes, I had to really think and try and break everything I did down and try and understand the fundamentals and create, I love diagrams. I'm a very visual person, try and create diagrams to explain it. And that's basically where my course and mediumship videos and then the study program, which is based on the videos, that's where it came from. So for me, there's three real elements of development. There's, there's a theory, there's a practice, and there's a self-development. Now, if you just go straight into practice with no theory, you'll be limited. If you only have theory, but you never put that theory into practice, you'll be limited. And similarly, if you don't do any development on self, and in terms of development on self, what I'm speaking about is spiritualizing the self, is doing practices like meditation and sitting in the power where we form a relationship with the spirit world. We make the spirit world real. We recognize the spiritual nature of ourselves. And if you like, we spiritualize ourselves, we sort our own stuff out. Mm -hmm. Similarly within therapy, before you're allowed to become a therapist, you have to have therapy upon yourself. Similarly with counseling, you have to go through all your own issues, move them out of the way so we can work with clients without any of our own issues cropping up. And it, for me, it's the same with mediumship. As, to work as a medium, we should be doing that with ourselves. We should get to know ourselves, and we should be dealing with all our issues in life to make us the clearest possible channel we can be for spirit. But for me, the self-development is a huge amount about spiritualizing ourselves. So that, they're, they're what I call the three components. In the first stages, I find that most people get a lot of benefit from understanding the theory. And they can take that to their practice and it helps their practice because they understand what they're doing. Let me give an example. If I say to you, go link with spirit, make a link to spirit. And you have no idea how to make a link with spirit. And what one approach I talk about in my classes is, an, is the Nike method. Just do it. People, and that's, that's the practice that most people teach. I'm not going to tell you how to link. Just go and do it. Some people, natural mediums may be able to do it relatively easily. Other people, it takes time, it takes effort. They need to understand a system. But if I broke it down for you, how you connect, 
you become energized, you're moving your mind, you're shifting your awareness, so you access it through the subconscious mind. We can use visualization, we can use intent, we can use affirmations. If I break it all down for you and explain that different things work for different people, but go away and try all these different approaches till you find what works for you, I give you a theoretical foundation from which you can step on to get there. And most people find it so much easier to do it that way. So for me, the theory is highly beneficial in the early stages. But then as we develop, it's the practice. We have to work with the practice. We have to grow and learn through trial and error. And then you can practice and reach a plateau. And the point that will make the greatest difference once you've achieved a certain standard with your mediumship for me is the self-development. Spiritualizing the self, making that time to spend in the presence of spirit, sitting with spirit, and moving to those conditions that help the potentials and gifts and abilities within us to unfold. There's, there's, you know, there's an argument um, that we should be developed to be a medium or we should allow the mediumship to unfold through creating the right conditions within. And the truth is it's a path of both. We go with the teacher to develop, but we have to work on self to unfold. It's the two go hand in hand. So if you like, that's kind of my, my overview what I think is needed if we wish to develop mediumship. And the one gap I found, and really I, I still don't see a great deal of people teaching it a lot, is the theory. So that's where I put my course in mediumship uh, videos out there. And then we move to a study program where we supplement it with tutorials. And I give some suggestions for exercises. And that's the theoretical foundation. But I always say to people, you've got to go find your own practice. And that's another question, isn't it? People often ask me, well, where do I go to get practice? How do I get practice? And another thing I have to mention as well, I see quite commonly in the UK, is if people go and are taught by tutors who are poor, tutors who are not good, and they get into very bad habits with their practice, if they do that for so long, those habits are very, very difficult to unpick. You know, people who work with their eyes shut permanently are people who are taught that they're not allowed to feel spirit they have to see and hear and no hang on the clear sentience is the foundation the cornerstone through which it all works um some people are taught to work on platform by choosing who in the audience they go to and then working psychically with them and if you get a spirit link great and i, I don't teach that way at all but for people who have been taught that way it's very very challenging for them to to break all those habits and move to a different form of working so the right teacher is really important and there's a lot of people out there who do offer practice but try I, don't, I would always say to people try and find the best quality teachers and practice you can get uh, and people often say to me can I recommend people and I always say I, I the people I know I can recommend are those people who uh, are tutors of the Arthur Finley College because I know they're all trained to a very high standard I know they're all excellent but if you ask me about this local medium, wherever you are in the world, the chances are I wouldn't know. If there are people who've been through some of my training, then yes, I can recommend them because I know quite a bit about them. I know that they teach to a good standard. But ultimately, we have to make sure that we're going with somebody who, first of all, can do this work themselves. That's something I see. People teach mediumship, but they're not working mediums themselves. Mm -hmm. They teach the same bad habits they've got. I see the... I see some people and I can say they're trained by that teacher because all the faults that that teacher exhibits in their own mediumship, they pass on to their pupils and students. And it's like, okay, if they don't need to address the issues, that's why I say this journey never stops. And, you know, I, I count myself in that, in that there's still so much more to be unfolded and developed within me as well. None of us ever achieve that point where we know it all. We just have better insight and knowledge than others but we're all still walking that pathway of development. So I hope that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. And it is a little bit, as I said earlier, inside baseball to when you can see the fingerprints of one teacher on, on their students. Absolutely. But, but that's kind of fun, you know, when you've been around and know that much. But the other place that people can get practice is in development circles, which I think I personally think are hugely important. And I feel like we should stay in circle for five years before going out professionally, but most people don't. Um, what do you I, think about I, development circles? For, for me, I don't think there's any hard and fast rule about how long you should be in a development circle uh, before you can go and work. Really, it depends upon 
the abilities present there within the person and how they're able to work with them. For some people, I've known some people need to sit in circle for 10, 15 years before they move on to become a platform medium. But for others, it can be as short as two years. But generally, once you start working, we should never give up the circles. Uh, most mediums I know still sit within some form of circle. And I, I still sit within circle personally as well, although the circle's not probably, it's more of a trans circle. It's more working with spirit, but it's st they still give me a lot of advice and guidance on my own development. But a developing circle, what is a developing circle? There's a developing circle within a church. There's developing circles within venues, within people's homes, within centers. There's developing circles online. And, you know, that's the one area that really has changed dramatically since I began is the online presence, the online abilities to work. And, you know, we have, we're, we're talking now in Zoom and it's now pretty much ubiquitous as the one that people go to. Prior to that, there was various different uh, webinar platforms we could work in. You could work with Skype, you could work with Google Hangouts. There's all sorts of things you could work in. But one of the things, the, the differences that we have to stress for me is that Working psychically is a lot more challenging in an online environment. Yes. You know, when you, when you work within a, a, a room with somebody, you have their physical presence, you have their energetic presence, their aura within the room right next to you. But when we're working online, especially if there's no cam and you've got a voice, or you, it's much harder because that psychic connection is, is affected. Now, it doesn't affect the link to spirit. We're, we're linking to spirit independently of the person in front of us. So we can make that link regardless in any circle, whether it's an online circle, a physical circle. You can even make the link yourself at home and make a link for somebody and write it all out longhand. Much more challenging without any feedback, though, because without the feedback, it's easy for us to get distracted and go off on a tangent, absolutely. So. I, in the early stages, always do it with feedback. You need somebody in the room. And I'm not a big fan of these people who post a photograph on Facebook or social media and say, what can you tell me on it? That's not a good way to work in my experience. So I prefer it to be much more focused within a, a development environment, a circle environment, a classroom environment, a workshop environment, a course environment. And I know people who run online courses now, day-long courses, on Zoom as well. So the, the, the platform lends itself to teaching in many ways. But if you want to start to be a medium, understand there are limitations of the online environment because you need some other way as well to work with the psychic. Because that aspect, if someone, I see people who train solely online and it doesn't flow and work as well as it should because those psychic impressions we're used to getting by working in the awareness circle, by working on the psychic, is not trained to the standard it needs to be. And therefore, what they receive from spirit, they're having to do their psychic development through their mediumship rather than doing it as a, as a first step to move beyond it. So it can, it can hold us back a little bit and it can make a challenge, I find. I, I, yeah, I completely agree with all that. I, it's absolutely been my experience. I, and having said that, I still think Zoom circles are great. They're terrific for mediumship development. Yeah, they offer a lot of benefits, absolutely. Yeah, there's, I'm, not, I'm not against them. I, I used to teach a great deal on the SNU International site, which really was, a, was there before Zoom. Uh, and it was an online facility. I used to do online classes, online circles, online open platform. And again, it's the same thing, but we didn't have video. We just had voice. Oh, that's so even tougher. It's tougher. Well, what I think is instructive for people who are sort of just starting out with understanding the landscape of instruction and how development works for mediumship is it's very interesting if you've only ever been in a Zoom circle to then go to a mediumship workshop and to feel the difference in the energy yeah. uh, because the energy is almost, it is palpable. It is palpable in a mediumship workshop when you've got 30, 35 mediums together in the room. The energy is just, it's great. Uh, and it gives you a taste for uh, sort of the gradations that there are in, in energetic presence. And I think that's a useful experience for people to have. Absolutely. And I always encourage everybody, if they can, to somehow go to a workshop or a course so they can get the experience of working in person, not just online, because I think it's, it's very valuable to do that. 
And one of the other challenges I think I, I want to mention as well is that sometimes some of the online circles are what I call facilitated and not taught. I don't know if you understand the difference. So say, for example, uh, for me, teaching has to be supervised and watched by a teacher who watches what happens, who can help out when there's challenges and who can watch what's happening with people in their development and give them guidance and instruction to move forward. A lot of online circles, in my experience, are what I'd call facilitated, where you just work with people and your feedback really comes from the feedback you get from the other person rather than any teacher. And so I think it's very valuable as well to have some instruction from a quality teacher if you can. Uh, because even if it's just on an occasional week or a weekend here or there, that's vital and, and valuable. Because if all you do is go to facilitated circles, then you can develop a lot of bad habits that aren't picked up and corrected that a teacher would, 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 would see and be able to help you with. Mm -hmm. But you know, finding a good teacher is not an easy thing. I, I understand that. And, uh, you know, it's probably the greatest challenge is, is there being good quality teachers who can guide and steer us. Well, fortunately, we have a solution for that because Martin's course in mediumship is available online. And Martin himself is available in weekly or bi-monthly bi clinic. It's, uh, I, I do a monthly, what I call a monthly mediumship clinic, which is a question and answer class. Live. Uh, it, yeah, it's in Zoom live. Uh, what I ask people to do is to submit their questions in advance. And then I kind of structure them into a logical order. So we kind of say so all flows logically. And then I answer the questions, which is great as well, because some people may not be able to attend the class in person, but they can give me their question and watch the video replay and find the answer. Right. And so, yeah, so I, I do a question answer class. I, I've always called it a mediumship clinic ever since the days I was doing it on, on the SNU International class. And the idea was... Any problems with your mediumship, bring them along. Any challenges you have with development, any questions you have about mediumship, any questions you have on your development, you can bring them along and I will do my best to answer them. And generally, I, the classes last for about two and a half hours. They're not short classes. And we generally get through about 35 questions. And there's a huge volume of material in there. And it's um, fascinating. I mean, I, I have been to two of these clinics and it's absolutely riveting. I mean, I think I, 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 I'm not a beginner at mediumship and I find that I'm absolutely completely engaged for the duration of those clinics. It's, it's a very, very detailed inside close examination of the underpinnings of mediumship. It's just mediumship mechanics. Fantastic. A great adjunct to the course, which I am also working my way through at a snail's pace um, because I'm slow. I'm just slow. Uh, but I love the course and I love um, how much detail there is and how generous you are with what you give your students. I'm just constantly amazed that there's, there's nothing held back. It's just like everything is, is dropped down right there for the student to pick up. It's fantastic. Absolutely, Colleen. If, if I know it, I'll give it. So with my videos, I tried to give each video that I offered originally the core videos, which you can buy individually. They generally run for two hours, maybe two and a half or some. And I basically try and give as much material as I can on that topic. And then within the study program, what happened then was the study program was to take that material to the next level. So what we did was originally it was run live and, uh, I asked students to watch the video and then to give me all their questions on the video. So they watch a two hour video. And then we got about on average about 30 questions per video that I then answered in the tutorial. And I also gave suggestions for working with the topic. So whatever the topic was, say if it was evidence, I'd give different exercises that you could work with to help strengthen your evidence by, for example, removing certain types of evidence, by barring evidence, by focusing on evidence, by trying to get for every link you do, a different type of evidence and tick it off the category list, all sorts of different exercises to help people to push or just to stay with one piece of evidence and just drill into it deeper and deeper and deeper. So if I know it, I give it. And whatever I don't know, you can ask me about in the clinic and you can pick my brains and I will give you what I, whatever I know, I will give. And some, some, some tutors I know, I they give you a little bit like what you said, the, the piecemeal approach. But I've never done that. I've always thought, well, if I know it, I'm going to give it you. Uh, and some people have accused me of giving too much, but I don't mind. It's good. It's better to be generous than not generous at all. And, you know, if I know it, I'm not going to hold it back. You can have it. If you're coming to me for teaching, you can have it. And one thing I will say as well, you mentioned about your working through it at a snail's pace. 
It is a home study program. It is at your own pace. You can take as long as you like. Some people have taken five years to do it. Some people uh, have done it within a month. So the choice, you know, it's up to you. If you've got a lot of time on your hands, you can blitz it. But people tell me that when they come back to the videos and they come back to the modules, the study program, and they watch them again, they get something different every single time. And even though I taught it, I, I structured it, I recorded it, I'm pretty familiar with it. Sometimes I watch a class and I, I learn myself. I go, wow, there's a new angle there not thought of. Right. And wherever we are in our own development, we can go back to that theoretical teaching and see something different. People told me they've watched it three or four times at different stages in their development. And every time they get something totally different. Every time something stands out because we perceive it not as it is, but we perceive it through our, our, where we are in our own development is how we understand the information, how we receive it. So as we move in our development, different things will stand out, different aspects will raise to the fore. And this is the reason that I often recommend people to go back and reread where two worlds meet or reread Gordon Smith's books or reread what, you know, Stephen O'Brien's books, because yes. we, we do, uh, we can take things on board at different stages of our development. Absolutely. That just our filters were too granular before. It just couldn't penetrate. So, and speaking of books, <laughs> well, I'm just going to put you on the spot. When can we look forward to a book from you? Well, it, it, will, it will be 2020, I'm afraid. It will be. It will definitely be 2020. And I'd like to hope it's going to be first half of 2020. That will be the first book. There will be more as well. Um, but it's always a challenge. Writing a book, you think it's an easy thing. But uh, those people who have written books, I was, I was reading something about Glenn Edwards. He wrote his first book. It took him over five years to write his first book. And uh, it, I was like, the penny dropped. It's like, ah, <laughs> I can understand that because, you know, there's always a part of you that wants, I, want, I always want to include everything. I always want to do my best. I'm probably a perfectionist. And sometimes we write things and then we come back to it and think, do you know what? I'd probably like to write it with a different voice or a different angle. And so, so yes, I will definitely be getting it out in 2020. It would, first, I'd like to hope it's be out there by June 2020, first half. All right. So, well, you heard it here first. Yeah. We're going to hold him to it. <laughs> But in the meantime, again, I highly recommend Gordon Smith, Stephen O'Brien, Janet Nahavik. They're all really good books that to, to learn from. They, they, and I'm also a big fan of Harry Edwards. Uh, Harry Edwards' little pamphlet book, which is a little bit harder to get now, uh, which is on uh, a guide to mediumship, which was part of Life in Spirit. If you buy the Life in Spirit book, you'll get it in there as a chapter, or you can buy it as an individual book. Yeah. Well, um, thank you for that uh, tour of the important part of the canon of mediumship, soon to be amended with Martin's very own book. Um, I think we'll probably wrap it up here for session one. Um, anybody has any comments or questions, just put them in the, uh, the uh, comment section below this video, and either Martin or I will get back to you. Martin's on Evidential Mediumship Development Forum. He pops in with an answer every once in a while. Uh, it was a pleasure, always such a pleasure to have you here, Martin. Thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me, Colleen. It's always a pleasure to, to be here, too. And to everyone on the Digital Media Development Forum, thanks for being here today. I uh, look forward to seeing you on the forum. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.